So as we saw in the last video, there's um, ways of checking for disk errors on the pool. Um, and we can see using the minus V command on the Z pool status, what files and therefore what data set um, has got the corruption. But there was no way of fixing the file system apart from investigating the disk to find out if the problem was a disk or if it was just one of these cosmic bit flips that occur. Um, and uh, the only option we had was to, would be to restore from a backup in that case because we only had one um, VDEV in the pool. If I do the Z pool status again, you can see there's only one VDEV, which is our file. And if you remember what I said before, that as soon as you have one VDEV going wrong, the whole pool is invalid. Um, you can't access anything on the pool anymore. Uh, destroy. Okay, that's because my kernel text user is in that directory, so I didn't need to log out actually. Okay, so ZFS has three um, three types of disk structure, if you like, or three um, three main ways of using VDEFs, if you like. It's probably the best way of saying it. There's what's always been known as JBOD, just another bunch of disks. As with ordinary, well, quotes, RAID, it's not really a RAID because there is no redundancy. We just get a, a, a load of disks and you just stick them all together and you, you aggregate all the space that's on those disks into one uh, pool, just the basic um, amalgamation of all the space. The second one is to use mirroring. Um, so again, that's similar to existing redundancy methods where um, you can have two or more um, disks mirroring or reflecting the data on each other um, and there's well effective as 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 with most things in zfs there's effectively no limit to the number of mirrors you can have although obviously the more you have the uh, chances are that the pool will slow down because there's more data needs to be written across more disks across more controllers etc and then finally there's raid which in zfs terminology is a RAID Z and there are three types of RAIDs. There's RAID Zs with one redundant disk or, or one disk with parity on should I say. RAID Z2 with two parity disks and three RAID Z3 with three redundant disks. So they're, they're the available um, types of disk layouts that we can have in ZFS. Arguably, we've already seen one, the JBOD. We've just seen it a bunch of disks with only one disk, but you can keep on adding disks as, as you will. And you can add any number of block devices. When I say disk, it doesn't have to be a disk. It can be any block device. It could be a USB stick. It could be a file. It could be a disk. It could be you know, anything. As I said before, a DVD RAM, arguably. It's some sort of storage medium. If you've still got zip disks or um, sidejet disks, those things that were around in the 90s, arguably they could be used as well. External disks, um, you know, anything that appears to uh, Unix as a, or Linux as a block device um, is, is valid. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is create a, um, a new pool with two disks and this again will be without any redundancy it will be the combined space of two disks so all I do to create that is set pool create name of the pool and then I specify the um, disks that I want to create now again I'm going to um, use my files as disks for the time being just for demonstration purposes but normally you would be using physical disks 
So I use disk one and and if you're playing around with this like I am following what I'm doing, you there is a shortcut here. You can type in the full paths or you can use a bit of bash magic and specify the disk with the numbers either one comma two like that or one dash two as a range. Okay. Oh sorry, uh, dot dot as a range. So if I now do Zeppel status, so both of these commands are the same, identical. This command here and this command here, this is just using the bash feature where it expands the values of these. It takes the value. If you've not seen this before, it's what it's saying, it says repeat this section for each of these numbers within the curly brackets and this is a range so if this was one to three it would create three of these each saying disk one, disk two, disk three I just did one to two um, the alternate way of doing this is to do a comma and these are discrete numbers now so I could do disk one, two and four or I could do a range disk one to four oh, sorry one to four like that so if I do status, you'll see we've got the pool name test and we've got both disks, effectively files, but really the disks, um, as, as far as ZFS is concerned anyway, listed underneath. And remember what I said about VDEVs, these are VDEVs because they're directly under the pool name. So that we're still looking at individual VDEVs here which means that if one of these disks fails, the whole pool has failed. If we do a ZFS list, we can see we've got 1.75 gigs now. That's because roughly, roughly two gigabytes, each of these disks are one gigabyte in size. We've roughly got double that space. Obviously you appreciate there's overhead with creating a file system on these, which is why it's a little bit less than the maximum, as you'd normally expect anyway with any file system. And we can create um, bigger um, arrays, if you like. So ZFS list, we're now using three one gigabyte disks, totaling, well, it's getting closer to two and a half gig now rather than three gig, but you get the gist of this. For those Apple status, you can see we've now got three disks. And again, each one of those disks is a VDEV. And again, any one of those V disks fail, the whole pool fails. And finally, I'll, I may as well use all the disks I've got. I'll type this out individually so you can see the equivalent command that that expansion is creating for us. So you can see this is a lot more onerous to type out, prone to error, but it does the same thing. So Zeppel status, there's our four disks. Okay. So um, yeah, what I can do now is create a data set. We can also, as I mentioned before, create a mixture of real disks and um, files like i say it can be any block device it doesn't have to be um, one particular type so i could add on sdb sdc for example okay this will take a, bit, a little bit longer right now it's warning me because i'm mixing them it's you know warning me probably because it's not the most efficient way of doing things i don't care i just want it done so I specify the F. Like I said before, technically the F should go between the command and the first parameter because that's how it is when it lists. But it does work at the end. But I wouldn't rely on that if you're scripting anything. I wouldn't rely on that as always being the case. You'll notice also that the order that we place these disks on the command line is the order that they appear in the um, listing when we do 
Z pool status. So I keep on using my slow disk that's faulty and it's taking a little bit longer but if we do status you can see there now we've got the four files that appear as disks we've got two real disks it's not complained it's perfectly valid we've got 2.64 gig which is roughly the 1.3 gigs plus a, a few extra gigabyte uh, sorry two 1.3 terabytes plus three and a half gigabytes which constitute these disks um, and yeah that's it that's um, you know no, nothing spectacular about it we've just got a a pool made up of different types of disk I could plug in a USB if I want to make that part of the pool um, you know it's, there's no limit to it it's just not going to be the most efficient in terms of speed or allocation um, to use a pool like that but it can be done so as you can see there that's reporting 2.7 terabytes so it's rounding it up by the looks of it and we can go the full hog Go absolutely silly and add in all the disks. So STD and STE. So we're going to have eight VDEVs, four of which will be files on a file on a uh, foreign file system, which is our root file system, and four physical disks. Um, and they're all going to constitute one pool. So you can see how this pooling idea works now. We can then create a data set and use the data and ZFS will just allocate the data across the disks and files as it sees fit in the most efficient way. So df h you can see we've got nearly five terabytes of space now and obviously only a small portion of that is provided by the files because it's so small that's reporting 4.83 and you can see the layout now we've got the four files and the four disks 